Way back in 1981, I was a young wannabe funny car driver with the almost impossible dream of winning the U.S. Nationals. One night here at Beach Bend Raceway in Bowling Green, Kentucky, I found myself as a part-time crew guy working alongside none other than the great Kenny Bernstein of Budweiser King fame. Together, we put a new clutch in the Budweiser King before a final round at a Division III points meet. We had to race double-A Dale Armstrong, another great legend of the sport. Kenny went on to win that race at Bowling Green, and it's a win that didn't make him famous. But what it did do is it enabled him to catapult himself to become one of the biggest names in the sport. Bowling Green is a place that doesn't give you fame, but it's a place where you pay your dues. This weekend, there are 12 top fuel drivers that maybe have the same dream that Kenny had or the same dream I had. Who knows how far they go? But what we do know is that this weekend, they're gonna be giving their all to win this race in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Okay, well, welcome to uh, Bowling Green, and here we are at the Holly Heartland Hot Rod Reunion or something like that. Is that the name of it? There, there's so many words <laughs> attached to this thing. I, I, but basically, it's, uh, you know, badass front engine top fuel drag racing in Kentucky. There you go. Before we get started with the action at Bowling Green, the second showdown in 2017's five event points battle, the Nostalgia Top Fuelers. Let's look back at the bizarre, unpredictable season opening March meet in Bakersfield. Popular distaff shoe Mindy Fry took top eliminator and the points lead. And by winning top fuel there, she joined a list of names that include some of drag racing's biggest legends. Among them, Don Garlitz, Don Perdome, James Warren, Mike Sorokin, Shirley Muldowney, and Butch Blair. That weekend, Mindy Fry disposed of some of the biggest names in the class, Tony Bartone and Jim Murphy. At Bakersfield, both Bartone and Murphy succumbed to self-inflicted wounds. After screwing the pooch, the three-time Heritage Series Nostalgia Top Fuel Champion Bartone was beside himself in disbelief. Murphy, meanwhile, was philosophical, but the fact remains his WW2 team has been runner-up at the last four Heritage Series events. Bartone and Murphy are here in Bowling Green to correct those mistakes and unseat Fry in the points lead. Also gunning for the March Beat champ are Dusty Green and his Nitro Hemi, as well as Midwestern motorman Jim Young, who has won at Bakersfield twice and has just set the track record last month at Union Grove's infamous Great Lakes Dragaway. Also in the mix is last year's winner from Bowling Green, Adam Sorokin, and his champion speed shop, Chevy Powered Entry, as well as veterans, journeymen, and famous nobodies like Wisconsin's Jason Greenwood, third generation drag racer Tyler Hilton, Illinois' Tim Cullinan, Diamond Dave Miller, Tulsa's Paul Schultz, and Atlanta's Julius Hughes. Without any further bluster, let's get to the qualifying results from Top Fuel Eliminator here at Bowling Green. Right on. 
biggest news out of these parts is the sinkhole at the Corvette Museum, or the day of the never-to-be-forgotten Bowling Green Massacre, came from the barrel of young gun Jimmy Young, who startled the competition and the Railbirds during Thursday night qualifying with a sizzling quarter-mile volley of 5.68 seconds at 243 mile an hour. Young continued his torrid pace the next day against Dave Miller. He lowered the number to beat 5.61 seconds at a mind-boggling 260 mile an hour. Confident the 561 would stick for low ET, Young gave his gang the rest of Friday afternoon off. Continue our coverage of top fuel qualifying from Bowling Green by following the exploits of Northern California hot shoe Dusty Green. Green missed Thursday's qualifier and is shown here in the second qualifying session, swinging for the fence in an attempt to make the show. The Nitro Hemi gang missed on the clutch setup and whipped hard. That left them with one final attempt to get in the program. To make the show during this Hail Mary qualifying attempt, Green must run quicker than Paul Schultz, Tim Cullinan, Julius Hughes, and the man who currently sits on the bubble, Jason Greenwood. at 245 mile an hour. That qualifies him, but bumps out Greenwood. Ouch. This brings us to our next pair, Turbo Tim Cullinan and the Heritage Series top field points leader, Mindy Fry. Earlier today in qualifying, Fry propelled to the top half of the field with a sizzling 569. So far, Cullinan hasn't exactly knocked the world off its axis. He shook and shut off earlier in Q2, and now finds himself not qualified in the number 11 slot. He has one shot left to join the eight car limit. Colin in post a 635 and doesn't crack the top eight. Mindy stays third and is firmly entrenched in the eliminator. If he could have, I bet if he could have kept his foot in it to the finish line, he would have, he right. would have, he would have got in. But uh, you've got to keep these cars in the groove. I mean, yes. it's that simple. 635 from Colin, not good enough. Good improvement, but not good enough. Next up, we have a solo pass. Third generation drag racer Tyler Hilton and the Great Expectations 3 big block Chevy powered AA fuel. Hilton, who is the grandson of legendary first wave professional drag racers Jim and Allison Lee, finds himself in the vulnerable position of being the boy on the bubble. Grandmother Allison Lee reaches over and turns on Hilton's data recorder. That was one trick piece of tech they didn't have back in her day when Allison Lee was one of the world's best at reading the spark plugs on a top fuel car. Bobby Hilton adjusts the barrel valve and sends his son Tyler into the beams. Besides using a big block Chevy, the Great Expectations 3 machine is one of the few entries to employ a two-speed transmission. Hilton short shifts to prevent tire shake and posts a 610. He stays on the bump and is still vulnerable to attacks from Paul Schultz and Julius Hughes. The man on the bubble, 6'10 with a 9. There are two other cars that still have not qualified that could bump him. Paul Schultz, 
Tulsa, Oklahoma, Spirit of Tulsa, Top Fuel Dragster. Now these guys that are here working with me, they actually think they're the special ones, but nobody is the special one. Our next two potential qualifiers include Paul Nobody Schultz and his Spirit of Tulsa digger against last year's winner of Bowling Green, Adam Sorokin in the Chevy powered Champion Speed Shop machine. Adam is currently fifth in the field as seen here in Q2 when he posted a literally fury 588 at a park smelting 185 mile an hour. He wants the number one spot. Schultz is presently 12th Put on the, the charts and has one last shot to break into the top eight and turn a nobody into a somebody. Sorokin puffs. Neither driver helps his cause. Schultz is going back to Tulsa, but Sorokin gets to stick around and attempt to defend his bowling green title. The next matchup is a qualifying joust between two top fuel titans, Tony Bartone and Jim Murphy. Bartone is the three-time repeating series champ, but has stumbled at Bowling Green in his last few visits. Murphy runnered up here last year, and that seems to be his modus operandi. Over the last season, he has been the bridesmaid of the last four events. Murphy was already slotted second in the elimination ladder, and Bartone is nestled fourth. Rebound's going back. Murphy going to sit in the number two spot. So he's the target. Bartone sitting in the number four spot. So he wants to back up his top of the lead. That's the number one track on the chart. This is the championship right now. Up against the lower down. Bartone towards the stage. Neither driver improved his qualifying position in this, the final qualifying round. Better run for Bartone, 637 for Murphy. Not the run he was looking for. He slowed down. 637, 166. So Murphy clicked off. Diamond Dave Miller's in the show by virtue of a 6.04 recording posted Thursday night. Currently number seven, his goal is to improve his time and move up the ladder. Miller misses on the tune up here. He goes into immediate tire smoke, pedals it, and then boils the hides a second time. No improvement for Diamond Dave Miller. He's coasting down track, but that was not what they expected. They expected to get better traction. Really killing. And finally, we have the Atlanta Speed Shop rail job of Julius Hughes, who is not part of the program thus far. Here he is against the champion Speed Shop Thursday night when both entries struggle. Hughes has one more swing of the fence. To be competitive against the Mindy Fries and the uh, Tony Bartones and, sure. the, and Adams of, the, of this world, you've got to you've got to leave hard. I mean, the thing's got to run. Hughes misses here with a 6:28 clocking, but he does post a career best speed of 241 mile an hour. So some you win, some you lose. Some he set a personal best and still missed the show. And so the top fuel ladder at Bowling Green has been set. Number one, Jim Young, will face off against number eight, Tyler Hilton. Number two, Jim Murphy, will square off against alternate Julius Hughes, who is pinch hitting for the broken David Miller. Number three, 
points leader Mindy Fry will take on her challenger, Dusty Green, who qualified in the sixth position. Number four, Tony Bartone, will mount up against number five, Adam Sorokin, in what is sure to be one Donnybrook of a drag race. And that's our top fuel ladder. Tyler Hilton, 27 years old, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Great Expectations 3, Nostalgia Top Fuel, and I love Patsy Klein. My name is Jim Young from Salem, Wisconsin, and I'm the owner and driver of the Young Guns Nostalgia Top Fuel Dragster. I'm the two-time Mars Meet winner and uh, current NHRA uh, Nostalgia Top Fuel speed record holder, and we're trying to make all these California guys come catch us today. Here we are, Dragster Rumble. This is Cole Coons with our ace color commentator with Bazemore. We're in Bowling Green, Kentucky. This is the first round of Top Fuel Eliminator. And our first pair will be young Jimmy Young versus even younger Tyler Hilton. We have Jimmy Young, who's uh, kind of a unique individual. And then on the other hand, we have uh, Tyler Hilton, who's second or third generation. His dad is Bobby Hilton, who's someone who I, I got to see race when I was a teenager on the I Dre circuit way back when. It's cool to see his son in, in the Jim and Allison Lee car, just like the real old days. So my question to you is, in the Deep South, can you be a second and third generation drag racer simultaneously? Uh, no. I, I just saying that some of the relationships uh, on this side of the Mason-Dixon are a little ambiguous. Tyler's got his work cut out for him here. He's got to be perfect in the car, and the car has to be perfect because uh, Jim Young is the guy to beat. Number one qualifier, Jim Young, has got an agenda. He wants to go to the top of the pops. Tyler Hill strikes the tires at the hit. Jim Young possibly drives this entire shake 599 to 253 miles an hour. Jim Young, he's impressive. He had to pedal it out there for a, for a quote unquote part time racer. Uh -huh. They're doing uh, an incredible job here. A few low qualifier in a field against the hitters, Adam Sorokin, Mindy Fry. It's saying a lot about their team and, and the guy as a racer. I'm Mindy Fry, driver of the High Speed Motorsports Front Engine Top Field Dragster out of Anaheim, California. My team has won this race, the Bowling Green Hot Rod Reunion, more times than any other team combined. And our goal is to keep that streak alive today. Hi, I'm Dusty Green, driver of Steve Harwood's Nitro Hemi. I'm from Pleasant Hill, California, and I'm here to beat the March Meet Champion today. Right, that brings us to our next pair, and we've got uh, Dusty Green qualified in the bottom half of the field uh, on a do or die effort up against your March meet winner, Mindy Fry, who may or may not be the favorite, but uh, is least number three qualified. Uh, I think she's uh, for sure the favorite in this round. Okay, well, yeah, that goes without saying, but Dusty Green does have an agenda. He has said specifically, he is here to take up the March meet winner. I don't know what he's got against Penelope Pitstop. For Dusty, uh, it doesn't matter if it's a March meet winner in the other lane or someone else, he's here to win. And for Mindy, you know, it's it's uh, it's kind of like the pressure's on because you won the biggest race of the series, and with that comes a big target. So, you know, all eyes are on her. They're leading the points now. They certainly do not want a first round loss. And it, it's a different mentality going from being the hunter to the hunted. And some people respond better to that than others. Well, it looks like Dusty's out on her, but he uh, shakes and moves around as she drives around him. 
571 at 258 miles an hour. That's a hard charging 258 miles an hour for Mindy Fry. Losing 617 at 186 miles an hour for Dusty Green. Pretty much a, a flawless, uh, flawless run and, and good mile an hour. They're making good power and the car is healthy. Going down the track without hurting itself and that's a key. That's a key ingredient to winning races. Is uh, you have to have a you have to have a happy race car. I'm Jim Murphy. I live in Santa Rosa, California, and I drive the WW2 Top Fuel Dragster. We're here this weekend to try and take the points lead. We're in second right now. We did loan Tony Bartone, who's the king of this class, our spare fuel pump for this weekend, so I'd love to race him in the final and take him out. Hey, I'm Julius Hughes. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I've got the Atlanta Speed Shop Zot 6 Top Fuel Dragster. We're going to be running Jim Murphy first round. We're going to send him back to California, that dry desert where he knows how to race. So every time you say the word happy, it reminds me of the way that Roland Leong pronounces happy. His entry is up next. Jim Murphy uh, owned and operated and driven WW2 car, tuned by Roland. And they're up against what we thought was going to be Dave Miller, but actually it's the alternate, your homeboy, Julius Hughes. Julius Hughes from the Atlanta Speed Shop kind of a, a famous old name you know it, it's a it's a small team they didn't run that well in qualifying they got in as an alternate which uh, sometimes you have to take those opportunities and you can turn it into something Roland on the other hand is Roland he's a legend of the sport and his driver Jim Murphy he's been doing this for a long long time he's in his 70s I think uh, but that doesn't mean you can discount him he's a very serious competitor kind of an understated guy very serious about his racing and he's, he's put together a, a very good team with Roland Leong as his crew chief. Roland's had a million drivers and a million wins. <laughs> but, but in this but, instance Roland can't fire anybody because he's the hired gun. Right, right and that that bodes well for Jim yes. but uh, but Roland hasn't won yet as a tuner in this class. Well I'm sure that is something he wants to correct here. He's up against uh, Julius Hughes who I don't think he's ever fired a shot in anger. I think this is his first eliminator. No contest. Yes. So a 573 at 245 miles an hour for the victorious Jim Murphy. A 638 at 219 for the valiant effort of Julius Hughes. Well, Leong is definitely marching on. I should say Jim Murphy's marching on, but I think that's emblematic of what a presence that Roland has. Hi, I'm Adam Sorokin. I'm from La Crescenta, California. I drive the Champion Speed Shop Top Fuel Dragster. One of the fun-filled facts of this car is that we've painted it every single time we've raced due to fires. Hello, my name is Tony Bartone, driver of the Bartone Brothers, Nostalgia Top Fuel Car. We have the number one on there from last year, the year before, and the year before. And we're going to try to continue that winning tradition here at Beach Bend Raceway this weekend. So here we go, it's our last pair. Tony Bartone, who qualified by fourth, is the number five qualifier, Adam Sorokin. This is not the first time these two have paired off, and generally the MO is that Adam cuts the light, and he marches towards the big end, and about 800, 900 foot out, they start mixing up cylinders, and things get a little hinky. At that point, the engine lets go, to be blunt. Well, we talked about Mindy Fry having a happy car, and uh, we can talk about Adam Sorokin having a non-happy car. Lately, Adam has to drive a, a hurt car to the finish line, or close to the finish line. And, and that's, a, that's a tough thing as a, for a driver, especially when the engine's in front of you. Now, Adam has a canopy, but it's still, a bomb sitting in front of you. It's not the most pleasant thing uh, to be on fire 200 plus miles per hour. Bartone has his work cut out for it. He lost the March meet as a driver, and he, he had a better car. 
So he has to redeem himself, and, and it, it's a mental, it's a very mental sport. And he's up against Adam Sorokin, who is arguably uh, the best, I mean, definitely one of the best drivers in not just this series, but in my opinion, in all of drag racing. It's a tough thing for the Tony Bartone right now to mentally get to that level where he's perfect. And then Adam, on the other hand, as a car that's on fire all the time, that takes a whole nother kind of mental approach and mental, uh, mental strength. The stage. Margin of victory, Tony Bartone, one one hundredth of a second. The 571 at 256 miles an hour for Tony Bartone chases down and goes around Adam Sorokin, 573 at 246. But that was all about Adam's light and then the car letting go. Adam left on him for sure. It's a car length, uh, half a car length uh, going past the Christmas tree. And, and then Adam's car blew up again. Tony's going in the next round. And, and Bartone will face our number one qualifier, Jim Young in the second heat, Murphy will pair up against Mindy Fry in what is a rematch of the March Meet Final. I tell you what, two great second round matchups, really good racing coming up. Outstanding. We have Mindy Fry pit side up against Jim Murphy and what we've said is a rematch of uh, the final round of the March meet. You know what I find interesting? Jim Murphy and Roland have, have been to five final rounds and they have yet to win and they've yet to make it down the track in the final. So this is not a final, it's a semi-final, but it, it, it has the same importance as a final and they're racing the, the person that, in the team that beat them at the last race. Roland has yet to win in this category. And, you know, the guy's a legend of the sport, and uh, you can't underestimate him because sooner or later, that luck, that bad luck is going to go away, and, and you make your luck. And, but they're, they're going to keep chipping away at it, and they're going to end up in a winner's circle. And Mindy Fry right now has to do her best to keep that from happening. But in the back of her mind, I'm sure she knows that, okay, they are overdue, and they're a great team, and I've got to be 110%. Looks like she's having some problems, a little tire shake, tries to pedal it, but to no avail. A 581, 260 miles an hour is a losing effort to uh, Jim Murphy's superior 573 at uh, a mere 240 mile an hour. Murphy is perhaps on the path to uh, lifting that monkey off his back. Hard charging for Mindy, definitely trying to wring everything she can out of that mount. Yeah, that was an interesting race. Could the track have been a little bit longer? Mindy might have won that round, but it's it's only 1,320 feet. Leading to our next pair, Tony Bartone up against Jin Myung, the number one qualifier. So Bartone has the experience in a variety of uh, disciplines, uh, alcohol funny car, nitro funny car, and now a front engine fueler. Yeah, it's very interesting because this is a case too of the haves and the, and the, and the almost haves. Uh, I don't want to call Jimmy Young a, a have not because he's not, he's won, he's won Bakersfield, but he's, he races part-time. It's a small team. Bartone, on the other hand, is a very successful New York businessman. Uh, he's got a lot of polish. Uh, some might argue that, but I won't. Uh, <laughs> and, and most importantly, he's got a, a, a beautiful race car, a great team, and a big gold 
leaf lettered number one on the side of his car. A he's, little he's, ostentatious, and maybe Jim Young would like to take a piece of electrical tape across that number one. I'm sure he would, but uh, but Bartone earned it, and that's the point. They're the, they're the they're defending champions in this game. So Jimmy Young, he's got his hunger going for him, and he's and he's got his talent, and there's a lot of it. say about that. Jim Young marches to victory unopposed, uh, 589 at 256 miles an hour. We see Bartone idling down and in a world of hurt. What happened there, Witt? Bartone had an 033 reaction time. The car left and, and then he stopped. And it, it looks like he might have double stepped it on the starting line, which, uh, which means he, he put his foot on the throttle, floored it before, before was ready. Yeah. It's hard to understand that, but but sometimes it's an automatic thing, and so you know what's wrong. You, you floored it, and just as quickly as you slam the pedal down, you you lift back up, realizing your mistake. He could have just driven it to the finish line, and, and that happens to everybody at some point. Yes, we are still in Kentucky. This is the final round of Top Fuel Eliminator from uh, Bowling Green. Our last two competitors, the uh, ever fierce Jim Young versus the old and treacherous Jim Murphy. And consistent Jim Murphy. They have consistently not won the last five finals. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just telling you. Is there a positive way? The score here. And. Uh, well, the positive is that eventually, when you're that good, things turn around. And if you're if you're in the final round every race you go to, uh, sooner or later, you're gonna win one. Game theory teaches you that if you flip a coin five times and it comes up heads each time, it is still 50% heads or tails on the sixth flip. So for the last five times- Is that how that works? It, it, it is actually. To, and to that end, the odds aren't any better and he is, attempting to run down the number one qualifier, Jim Young. Every step that Jim Young has made has been in the right direction. Murphy, on the other hand, has been running well also, but can they take the monkey off their back? I will say that the odds are greater than 50-50 for Murphy now, but you're right. I mean, Jim Young is a, it's a hell of a racer, and uh, you know he's got a, a new baby, a very new baby, like I think five weeks old. Wow. As a father, uh, that's a lot. You know, there's a lot going on out of the race car and so when you take all of that into consideration I, I think he's doing an outstanding job so i guess the question is will young jimmy young win one for the young one? <laughs> for the young one which they named crew so crew uh, has his future mapped out for him already Jim Young had his hands full. He's sawing around trying to chase down Jim Murphy, and Murphy puts up a victorious 571 at 257 mile an hour. He went coast to coast on that jewel. 592 at uh, 253 mile an hour for Jim Young doesn't quite get there. It looks like he got into a little tire shake, and it looks like the car got a little out of shape, and that was just enough to scrub up some ET for, for Murphy to take top eliminator. You know, Jimmy Young did his job on the starting line. He had almost 500s advantage, which is uh, quite a big, quite a big move. And uh, but the car just uh, wasn't quite as strong as as, uh, as Murphy's. It did shake the tires a little bit, and that'll uh, that'll do it. And then down at the other end, he was skating around, like you said. And as a driver, that's usually a lot of fun. You know, I always enjoyed driving a loose car like that, but not in the final round. The final round, you're there to win. You're not there to have fun. Going into our next race, uh, Boise, Idaho in August, you will see many of these same uh, motley characters in uh, yet another edition of Drag Strip Rumble. So until then, this has been Cole Coons with uh, the ever effervescent Whit Bazemore uh, saying see you later. See you later. Thanks. <laughs>